Hey guys, how you going? Sam here from Core Electronics and today I'm taking a look at the Sphero SPRK Plus or Spark Plus as we'll refer to it, it's a little easier. And this is a fairly new uh, bit of gear from Sphero. They're known for making educational toys, uh, learning tools, things like that. Uh, they had the first Sphero which was really, really cool. Uh, a circular orb with a, a hamster wheel uh, style drivetrain inside of it that could, you know, could move around and could be controlled from your smartphone. Then the Sphero 2.0 came out, uh, you know, a, an innovation or, you know, a new iteration of that particular product. Uh, then we had the Sphero SPRK <clears throat> and now we land at the SPRK Plus, which is really cool. So I'm going to take a look, we're going to unbox it, take a look at what's inside, um, how it works, get set up for the first time and take a look at some of the um, Sphero resources and community. So let's take a look and you'll notice it's got a really, really nice box. I like, I feel like I really enjoy products that are packaged really nicely. It's attention to detail and, you know, if they're paying attention to the, the matte laminate being really nice on the, the cardboard wrap, then there's probably going to be that same attention to detail shown in other aspects of the, um, of the product, which I think is really cool. So once we've taken the box off, we've got a um, bit of a document pack and inside is a uh, some stickers, sticker sheet, very cool. Um, we've got a quick start, a visual quick start guide. So I'll get to that uh, a little bit later. We've got a legal guide. So, you know, in all of the different languages, all of the safety and uh, less fun things like that. Uh, then we've got a cool cardboard protractor, which you can use for all of your different, uh, all of your different projects, which you need to measure things with. So that's what comes in that little pack. Set that aside there. Then we've got the Sphero itself. Very cool uh, tennis ball sized orb. So you can see how big it is there. Yeah, tennis ball is pretty good. And it feels really nice. It's, it's nice and heavy. It's got a good weight to it, but not too heavy. Um, and it just feels like a really, really, really well designed product. I love that it's transparent. I think that's really cool because if you're trying to encourage, you know, kids and young minds to take an interest in robotics and, you know, electronics and uh, STEM learning and things like that, then they don't want to just be looking at a white case. They want to be looking at what's going on inside and you can see the circuit board and how the motors uh, fit together and everything like that. And it's a really, 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 really cool, cool little package in there. Uh, we've got the inductive charger base, which I like. So the uh, the actual Sphero here is waterproof. It's got a scratch resistant waterproof shell. So you can do all sorts of water based activities with it as well. Very cool. So it fits in there, inductive charging. We've got a micro USB cable, a nice little cardboard wrap. We've got a piece of waxed paper hiding the uh, the tape. So this is, uh, you know, measuring tape in the truest sense of the word. It's got a ruler on some sticky tape. So if you want to create mazes and obstacle courses and things like that, you can uh, measure it by sticking down the tape onto your objects rather than having to hold it down or tape that down. Really well thought out, you know, collection of stuff. So that's what's in the box. I'm just going to put some of these things away. We won't be using the maze tape today. It is, as I said, a cool addition though. All right, box this guy up, put it away. Again, such a nice box, I really like it. So you can see on the side as well, uh, you know, the, some of the things you can do with it, solar system activities, you can paint because it is waterproof, you can cover it in paint and paint tracks around, uh, things like that, which is really cool. And there's also a whole bunch of accessories uh, and, you know, extra bits and pieces you can get to enhance your Sphero experience. Some of the more toy-based things like the, the jump ramps and terrain parks through to uh, add-ons you can you can get so you can build uh, extra platforms on top of it to make it a really interesting and unique robotics experience, which I think is, you know, is nice and cool. So if you're the, you know, the number conscious sort of person, uh, we've got some specs, so Bluetooth Smart, uh, 30 meter range or 100 foot range for our American friends. Uh, so they've rated at 4.5 miles per hour as the top speed, which uh, converts into 7.2 kilometers per hour or two meters per second. Uh, one hour battery life, so that's probably one of the only gripes I have with it is it's obviously designed to be used in a, you know, say a classroom setting. 
And whilst most standard classroom sessions uh, will only run for maybe 40 to 50 minutes, if they do want to get an extended session out of it, then you're going to have to uh, to charge it. Uh, the charge time is three hours, so you've got a little bit of you know time delay in there. But considering what it does and what it's doing, a one hour playtime is actually you know is actually pretty good. It could be longer, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And it's, it's going to serve for, for most, you know, people's purposes. Uh, inductive charging, as we mentioned, so you just plug the micro USB cable into the base and then the Sphero just sitting on top and he charges and it's got a, a top and a bottom and naturally he'll self-level when he's turned on, but there is a weight at the bottom as well, which makes it pretty easy to see how he's supposed to sit there and you just put him into the into the stand with that, that coil underneath the weight there on top of that coil. It doesn't need to be perfect. Pretty much, you know, any rough alignment will do. So to get started, oh, oh, and there is a smartphone app, so freely available. I've got the uh, the iOS version here. It's available for iOS and Android, and I put some links in the tutorial there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is plug your Sphero in. So the blue light there will start uh, blinking. It will turn on once when you don't have your Sphero on, and then when you put your Sphero on there, after a few moments, it will start blinking blue, which means that it's charging. There we go. And when it's finished, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that just there. Uh, and then when it's finished charging, it'll change to a solid blue, which is cool. So as I said, you want to make sure it's fully charged before you use it for the first time. So I've already got the, the app on my phone here, so go ahead and download that and get that sorted out. And you'll need to set up an account. So there's three different types of accounts you can make using the Sphero EDU app. There's all kinds of Sphero apps, but the SP, um, SPRK Plus, specifically designed for you know education, things like that, so it's the Sphero uh, EDU app. And that's compatible with all Sphero robots, but it's got you know the community and the resources that are geared towards the SPRK Plus. So your, uh, your account type, you can make it as a learner, which is designed for students or kids. Um, educators, obviously teachers, people who are managing a classroom full of users, so you get access, to, you know, it's, it's geared towards showing you those resources, the lesson plans, the activities, and everything you need there. Uh, and parent, of course, similar to educator, but designed so that you can manage multiple uh, accounts for your children, which is a really good way to streamline that experience, and make sure they're not bogged down by, you know, unnecessary stuff. So go ahead and make an account. You can do that either online I've got a link to the Sphero website in the in there or in the app it'll prompt you to as well. Uh, if you've already used Sphero, then you should be able to sign into your Sphero account as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get it started. So the first thing you want to do is, um, well, there's a few different modes of use, which I'll get into later. Um, and we're not going to go super in depth. It's not a, not a tutorial on how to actually code your Sphero or things like that. It's just a review. We're taking a look at the features. So the first thing you do, it's the first thing I did, you want to drive it around. That's pretty cool. So on the app there, uh, down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see drive uh, and select the type of Sphero you're using and hold it, your phone close to the Sphero robot. In fact, I'll take him off charge. He is done. So you'll need to make sure you've got Bluetooth turned on because it uses Bluetooth to communicate. After a few seconds, it'll go, um, LED will turn on and it'll go to the color. So you can see if I move it around, uh, it self levels, which is pretty cool. So it's pretty neat. And if you rotate, rotate it around, he, uh, you know, he stays in position, which is pretty cool. So now you can open up the drive mode. I'll bring that a bit. So this is what the drive mode looks like. You can set the color of the LED, uh, set it to green as well as the intensity. Kind of like that pinky, reddy sort of sort of color. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to turn the speed down. You've got a speed control here because I don't want him to go off the table. But uh, to to set up the orientation, so with the remote control car, uh, you know that driving style, it's always going to be facing one direction. But because it's uh, a spherical object, you need to set the target direction, similar to you know setting north on a compass. So you've got this little touchpad here and you want to make sure that the blue light is facing you and you'll rotate. So yeah, it's facing me, which means that way is going to be straight. So I can drive him this way. I can drive him back and this way, this way. I've just started calling it, it uh, a him, Sphero call it a him on their website and he has a bit of personality. So I'm going to keep calling it a him. Oh, oh, and we're good. So you can drive him around, you can do all this stuff and you can max up the speed. I'm going to... We'll just have a short little speed demonstration. 
Alright, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room here. He goes quite fast. As I said, two meters per second max speed, which is pretty cool. Let's ramp that back down because it's a little crazy. So that's free drive mode uh, that we've got, which is a huge amount of fun. You've got block programming, so you can go into programs, uh, my programs, create a new program, and it'll uh, tell you to either create a text program, a block program, or a draw program. So block programming is based around the scratch uh, environment, so you can just drag and drop blocks there. So controls, you know, we can just add an, an action. So let's add a roll action in here. Um, you know, let's just make him roll for two seconds, I suppose, at uh, only a little bit of speed and let's make him go to the left. All right, so you can go start and he'll upload that except he's gonna run off the table. So I'm gonna stop doing that. Pretty cool, nice quick program as well. You don't have to wait ages for your program to upload. All right, so we can get out of that and you can create a text program. Now, one of the issues I have with the app, really the only big issue that I have, is that it encourage, you can program your Sphero in, uh, in a C-based uh, programming language, well, C really, which is really, really cool, especially if you've used Arduino or something like that, it's going to feel really familiar. But the issue is writing C programming on uh, you know, a small phone screen isn't exactly intuitive. On you know, an iPad or a tablet, it might be a bit better, but I, I personally prefer a, mecha uh, prefer a mechanical keyboard because you know, having a bigger screen allows you to look up the functions, so it's not going to be immediately apparent what you need to do in order to make your Sphero roll forward. You're going to need to look up the function, look up uh, you know, the arguments that you need to pass to it, the parameters, everything like that, uh, and then get going. But fortunately, there is a Google Chrome um, app we, so you can do it online, uh, no worries, but you can't program the Sphero from your computer, only if you have a Chromebook, you know, it's, it's hard to account for every type of Bluetooth connection out there, so they've closed looped to just Chromebooks and mobile devices, but you can write your program on any computer, and then because it's all cloud-based, it'll come up on your phone, uh, and you can then upload that, you know, that program to your Sphero. So, a little bit of a niggly issue, but not too bad, not too bad. So you can create a text-based program, now we can draw, and this one's particularly cool. So you can just draw a plot, so I'm gonna make a bit of a zigzag pattern, hit start, and he will hopefully not fall off the edge, but he'll go in a zigzag pattern. So I'm gonna make that a little smaller so we can better see what's going on there. All right. Uh, let's change the color to green for this one. So he'll zigzag a bit, and back the other way, following that pattern that I've drawn, and you can see the live sensor data coming there. I'll set him back here so you can see as he's moving the uh, the direction and the, the velocity that he's traveling in, which is really, really cool. I really like that. It's a really uh, interesting way of programming that hasn't been implemented, you know, in a lot of other products. And the reason I like it is that, you know, as, as a young, young learner, a person who's new to programming, they've got this idea in their head of what they want to do with robotics, what they want to do with Sphero, but they don't know how to program it. So instead of even, you know, before they have to learn the block-based uh, programming, they can just say, yeah, this is what I want it to do. I'm gonna draw a picture and it's gonna do that. You can create a solar system model with multiple Spheros. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. That's where the protractor comes in handy, especially, and the measuring tape, you can measure how far your Sphero has gone. So. It's really, really cool. That gets a big thumbs up from me. So they're the four you know, programming or use cases that you can uh, do with it. And then the other big thing is the Sphero community. So if I, I'm just on the app here, and so you probably won't be able to see very well, uh, but I've provided a link there to the Sphero community, um, to the Sphero site just up above that. And so you can go, if you're in programs, you can go to Sphero and it's got all these ready to go programs which are designed so that teachers and educators can really easily put together lesson plans and get, you know, get stuck into teaching Sphero without having to dredge through all of the different functions. It just shows you when you explore it. As you go along then you've got the community where, you know, community user contributed programs which is cool and it'll tell you whether it's block based or code based or a drawn program perhaps. And then the activities culminate all of those different things into ready to go activities and it lists the resources. So we can see uh, the activity here from Sphero where it says, um, you know, it's looking at a Sphero city. And so you can click on it and it'll tell you what you need, uh, the age it's designed to, so grade one to six, it's a multi-day activity. Uh, it talks about geography, social studies and building. It's got all the supplies you need. So for this one, we need 
paper, tape, some toys or tools, something to draw with, cardboard, and some space to build your city. So it's just, it's such a well put together app and a well put together ecosystem that takes it from more than just a, a cool, fun little novelty toy into a really powerful learning tool. So I love it. I, was, I wasn't sure coming into it how, how much I would really enjoy or be able to recommend Sphero, but I have to say, it's a pretty phenomenal piece of gear. It gets my thumbs up, especially um, if you're looking at introducing your child or your class into STEM-based learning. Uh, if you are an educator, check out our tutorial on uh, using Sphero in the classroom. That'll be up on the site as well. We'll have a video up for that uh, shortly. Uh, so take a look at that, and yeah, get stuck in with some really cool STEM learning, guys. I'll see you next time.